Are we ready? Five, four, three, two. Oh, caught you guys off guard. <laughs> uh, you thought I was going to say one and then start. Um, okay, this is Atomic. Uh, I'm going to play Knight of Six. Okay, I get the Horde here. I get the Horde here. Whoa! What is this? I thought this is Atomic, right? This is also Atomic. Um... King of the Hill. So I immediately lock up the center. Okay, this is a free pawn. I'm not turning down a free pawn. Not there. Maybe some other positions, but not there. Okay. Um. I'm going to undouble some pawns. And just gradually move forward there. Um, yeah. I don't know why I allow Atomic in these simuls, because I tend to lose the Atomic games really quickly. Um, so the important thing is keeping my pawns together. Okay, how do I keep my pawns together here? I have to take away from the center to keep them together. Um, okay, I have no shots on that square anymore. Oh, this tactic. This keeps cropping up in game after game. It's a useful tactic to be aware of. I'll just keep my pawns together. Okay, we'll close the center, capture the pawn. So I could do, I could do queen to b6. Oh, he's got bishop e3. No, queen b6 though looks strong, because how do you deal with that? Queen b6... Say somehow he does find a way to deal with it. And then I sack on b3. I don't know. This looks strong. We're going to try it. This is also strong, and I should be very careful. Okay, this is hanging, this is kind of sort of hanging, I don't know. Stuff's hanging, yo. Maybe I do D takes E. I know that goes against my philosophy of never capture anything, but um, my stuff's hanging, so maybe... Well, I'm, I got some material, so... It's not such a big deal if I give a little back. Yeah, 
And D takes E looks reasonable on some level. I'm not sure which level, but somehow it does. Uh, I'm going to need... I'm not sure where I need my pawns. I think having as many E, F, and G pawns as possible will serve me well here. Okay. So my big idea was to try to keep this attack on F2 going. Um, so maybe knight takes or maybe pawn takes. Pawn takes, he has to play d4. Queen a5, I think, or queen b4, I think c3 is forced. Queen b2, queen c2, and then I take b1. Or wait, maybe I take e4, forcing d4, I take d4. He has to play queen d4 then. I don't know. I think my knight's a good attacking piece, so we'll keep it. King of the hill chess. Um, yeah, it's not going to go well. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get so smoked in that game. Um, that's going to be hilarious to look back on. All right, this is weak. Yeah, so queen b4. Oh, he's got knight c3. That doesn't concern me, though. Yeah, queen b4, knight c3, and now I do pawn takes pawn. Um, so queen b4, c3 is forced. Queen b2, queen c2 is forced. Am I missing that pawn takes pawn? No, pawn takes pawn doesn't win because then queen d4. But this wins. Or wins a lot of material. Alright, so he takes there. Um... Now the whole idea with the horde is that you're just supposed to be imposing. Just constantly threatening to threaten things. So it's okay to give away some material just for the sake of making more threats. Um, okay, I can't take f5 because then knight g4 happens. I could maybe do queen b3 to step out of this pin. Oh, also f4 threatening to take e3 is a big threat, so... Yeah, I could do uh, queen a4. Since, like, what's my queen doing on b3 that it can't do on a4? I think it's threatening b7, but I don't know. Now, b3 gives me more flexibility later on. We're going to go to b3. Alright, so I've got all the past pawns in the world here. They're all mine. Yeah, so that's going to be decisive, I think. Um, I could do queen c4 here. Or queen b5, rather. Queen b5 threatens this check. It's kind of hard to deal with. Queen b2 is also strong. So do I go there or do I go here? Um, which square do I go to? Well, if I go back and then I do this check again, maybe that's the way to go. If, yeah, queen b5. Queen b3 happens, and I don't have this check. 
So I have to do queen b2. Okay. Ah, he takes on c5 anyway. Well played. He knows that I'm not going to take that bishop, because then we get into a... Well, maybe I'll call it a pawn race anyway, but it's just not a good race condition to be in. Um, so, I don't need the bishop. Okay, here I take b1, and all his pieces go kaboom. I don't have to take b1 right away. In fact, I could do queen c1 check and force him to take me. But then I don't get the rook. I want the rook. Kaboom! Oh, wow. Um, in King of the Hill chess, I tend to be very territorial about the center. So for me to, like, get it so apparently easily makes me really concerned. Um, but I can't hold on to the center this way. I'll try c5, just to see if I can hold it. Okay, b4 is safe. Um, yeah, I've got all the past pawns ever. This should be winning. D takes e5. So yeah, he got my knight. So we corral his knight long enough for me to, uh, I don't know, maybe I castle queenside and after my knight's moved away. Uh, let's strengthen my center, maybe, maybe, sure, yeah, that looks fine. Okay, and I was intending to just take the knight. Should I take? This knight was what scared me the most. If I take, he castles, I castle. He does rookie one, I do rookie eight. I'm safe. So yeah, we're taking. Who cares if there's a better move? We found a good enough move. Now I don't know if there's a better move or not, but there might be. I'm not worried about it. Okay. Maybe just keep this rook out of the game with g5. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he did move back. Again, he manages to thwart my expectations one way or another. Um, so, okay. Wait, can I not take f5 here? Nope, definitely not. Gotta play c6. I don't see why not. C6, bishop, b4, check is annoying. Uh, so maybe knight g5. That's, this pawn move certainly stops me from playing knight e5. It doesn't stop knight g5, though. Yeah, so I was kind of worried about this. I think I just go back, and if he kicks my knight, I go back again to d5. Okay, so castle, castle. Again, I maintain that I'm safe there. 
and yeah I've got all the pawns ever maybe I just push c5 it looks as reasonable as anything okay oh I pushed d3 because that's worried about long-term ideas and yeah now we have the short-term threat of course so now he's threatening to sack and double all over there and now we're gonna open the H file and e4 just try to keep the center under control still got four games in progress okay the threatens bishop takes bishop and if knight takes h7 queen h4 is most unpleasant um, hang on guys I have an idea knight e6 any move and then I checkmate him that's probably a good idea I mean, what's better than checkmate, right? Okay, so we get a free rook. You can't turn down a free rook. And as I'm saying that, yeah, DV Razor points out that the same thing I pointed out. Somehow I managed to see these things, guys. And it's not because I'm cheating, because I don't need to cheat. I just need to get lucky. Okay, so now we got many past pawns there. King of the Hill Chess. Um, okay, let's exchange down. I know that seems unwise, but somehow it seems okay. Um... It's a d6, c6, I don't know. d6 seems to set me up on uh, a little bit closer to his king. And the only way he can capture that is with the bishop, unless he wants to sack some more material. So my conception here is that it's going to try to get a promotion, you know, over here somehow. Um... I'm still not sure how. I think maybe f6, g6, g7, something like that. e6 is also something that needs to be thought about. I think e6 is a necessary first step. Okay. Um, so I can't push my f pawn because then g5 hangs. I need to get this bishop out of the way. This makes me nervous, but okay, here we go. Okay, we gotta take a rook. <laughs> Dude, I have submitted um, public. I've given public knowledge that there is a horde chess engine, and I'm not using it. And my disclosing of the engine and its complete source code, which could potentially be used to detect cheaters, would not be something done if I wanted to cheat. Just understand that, man. That's like the guy who invented radar getting caught in a speed trap and then arguing that they weren't using it right. Which, true story, that actually did happen. But, yeah. I'm smarter than that. If I give people the engine, I'm not also going to try to cheat with it, because that's just ridiculous. Um... Okay, so he wants to sack on h3. 
Do I have to play g4 here? Now g4 hangs too many pawns. Um, I have to play f5. Yeah, yeah, Alex. Yeah. There's always the non-believers in any crowd. Okay. Oh crap. That's going to complicate things. Maybe I push f6, f7 there. Alright, at least he didn't take that. So now I'm threatening. Yeah. This, this, this. I mean, the queen's on the wrong side of the board. And there's a check. And GG, man. Okay, as for this one, maybe I have to play f5 to try to hold this together. f5 looks fun. F, f5, fun, starts with f. Must be the best move. Oh, no worries, Nico. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm more worried about my clock. Truth be told, I have not been watching my opponent's clocks very closely. Um, so yeah, if I move my knight away, then queen b5 and I cry. Maybe that's what I want. Knight b8, queen b5, knight c6, queen b7. That's as scary as it can get. I could throw in this check first. Oh. <laughs> well, this is king of the hill chess. Um, um, so ideas that would be completely absurd in normal chess might be playable here. Ideas like queen a5. Letting him check me. Or, no, queen a5, allowing him to take d7, and just a mad king rush. We're going to go with it. It might work. It's too fun to turn down. But it's a terrible idea, objectively. Um, so, yeah, now I can take the f5 square back. Yeah, e6 very much feels right in that position. I'm concerned very deeply for black, and that's why I'm lashing out with queen a5, because I don't think that passive play is going to get me anywhere there. I think I need to do something completely outrageous. And so that's why I did this check. Um, okay, so we got c5, and I could take on Passant, and I probably should, because this undoubles my pawns. Um, although I don't have a need to take it. I can get yeah a knight for one pawn. It's a decent exchange for me. Oh, wow. I did not calculate that one bit. Um, I guess two can play this mad king rush game. Things are going to get iffy there. Okay, I get a knight. Um, and now I just have to make sure I don't hang stuff. Which is far easier said than done. Okay, to protect this, I have to push the pawn. I think Neo has good chances there. All 
All right, 95. So, yeah, I can't tell you what's going on here. It's that insane. I'm going to walk into a fork. Um, and once he forks me, I could take on d4. Yeah. Um, so I just have to make sure I don't hang stuff. I want to push my d1, but there's so many things that have to move first before I'm allowed to. Um, so I have to defend this, and then I can consider pushing d4. And playing as the horde requires lots of patient moves. Okay, we got a king rush. Um, I think I'm going to have some shots here. It's going to be fun. Um, like, I think I can just take the pawn. Wait, that's actually quite dangerous. Um... I take queen takes. Oh. Yeah, never mind. We're not going there. Could I push f4? Probably not. Yeah, so that knight prevents me from doing things, but if that knight moves, I have stuff I can do. Okay, this hits my um, least advanced pawn. So we're going to build a pawn chain. We got this pawn chain, and we got this pawn chain. Um, and we have a problem, Houston. Is it worth sacking my A pawn for a tempo? Yeah, because the A pawn's not going anywhere. So we'll take a tempo for the A2 pawn. And then I have to just try to promote quickly. Yeah, there are lots of um, lots of tactics in the center there. Once the king gets close to the center, so um, do I push f6 or g6? If I do f6, I think he pushes g6, and I think there's nothing I can do. So I think g6 is necessary. So there it is. The idea is to push g4, g5, and then f6. This might end up sacking all of my h pawns, but um, that's the price to pay for trying to get a pass pawn. So I've delayed g4 as long as possible. There's no more delaying it. It has to be played now. Well, it's not that I'm consciously leaving traps either. It's that I have such a strong bias for aggressive moves that attack a lot of things and give my pieces lots of activity, um, that even if I blunder repeatedly, because my pieces are active, I'm bound to just happen upon some tactics somewhere. Like, as long as my pieces can go pretty much the entire span of the board, there's nothing for me to fear. Uh, 
So my pawn controls this, my knight controls this, my pawn controls this, my queen can sweep in an instant's notice. He's got a pawn controlling this square. And that's about the extent of what he controls in the center. Um, it's very extremely tempting to sack here. But I could check him and then I could sack. Yeah, I think I should check first and then worry about sacking stuff. So if I check king f3, I check again, king takes f4, I guess. Oh, I don't have e5 covered. That's kind of a problem. So I guess I have to do knight to d5 check if I'm going to check him at all. Um, and I think that forces his king just a little bit further from the center. Okay. Hey, I get a rook. I'll take a rook. I'm still not sure what I'm threatening here. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Um, so I was tempted to do rook takes knight. I could win the queen. No, I can't. Duh. Um, yeah, we're going to take the knight. Taking the knight looks fun. Okay. Yeah, this covers a lot of squares. Um, okay, there's queen h4. Can I take g7? We're going to try this. Okay. Now, all my pieces are active, and I've got this idea. Probably would play, I don't know, queen... no. I don't know what he does. I'm thoroughly confused. King e6. He's got to guard the square somehow. Maybe queen d4. And then I do queen takes pawn or something. As long as my king is safe on e6, I should just play it. Is my king safe there? I think so. This is a simul. Simuls are supposed to have fun adventures. So, king e6 it is. And now I look up and I see that DV Razor is also suggesting king e6. You know, it's great how I can win these games on my own. Ah, okay, so that did kind of sort of occur to me last move, but I didn't think it through. Um, I have to take the rook, don't I? Yeah, that rook's too powerful for me to let it stay there. Okay, so now I have to find a way to get my f-pawn forward. It's like, if I push g3, queen moves. Actually, if I could kick the knight, I'd have the g8 square. So g4 it is.
Okay, so there's queen d4 on schedule. And I'm planning, or I was planning, queen takes pawn. Um, okay, there's queen takes pawn. So I can't do anything to evict that knight. Um, I have to take h5, otherwise I'm losing some pawns. Um, and maybe this endgame is still tenable. Maybe I'm okay here. So... Yeah, now it would be nice if I could kick the knight, but I can't. The second best thing would be if I could get my pawn up to f6. Although that wouldn't be joining its comrade, because its comrade there is going down really quickly. Um, but no, f3 is hanging, so to avoid losing it... Yeah, there we go. Um... Oh, if I do knight takes bishop, he just takes my queen. Okay, my big idea of knight takes bishop is not so bright. But I could do queen takes queen. Yeah. GG. Well played. So if he takes my pawn, then I can push f5 without him sacking knight for two pawns. Um, so it's safe to push f5 here. Or his last move it wasn't. So my goal is to just build one pawn chain that spans the entire board. Like this. If I can get that going, that would be cool. Oh, he's threatening to sack on f5, by the way. Yeah, so he does sack on f5. I guess I take. Um, I need to keep my pawns connected, which means not giving up my f-pawn. We're looking at the final days for these pawns here. If he takes h3, I think I'm busted. Yeah, that would have been not exciting at all if you just developed instead of going for the gold. But, um, you know, chess is an adventure. I didn't know if you knew that. I don't know if I know that. Okay, so go f-pawn. You're our last hope. Obi-Wan Kenobi, you can do it. Yeah, it's not looking so good. Um,
So the last hope is that he forgets, and he goes like after my H pawn or something, and it allows me to advance just a little bit further. But if he's got his wits about him, he'll just play King D8, and I have nothing here. Alright, so does c6 lose? Yeah, c6 king takes, c7 king moves. c6 probably loses. Again, I don't have c6 because um, uh, queen takes c6. Yeah, we're hoping, we're putting all our hopes and dreams on this H-pawn. So go, Herbert. Don't let us down. Yeah, he's doomed to let us down, but we're not going to tell him that. So the best I can hope for here, I think, is a stalemate. And the fun begins, right guys? So I could do queen c8. Queen c8 would draw the game on the spot. I could be greedy. If I think somehow I could... Actually I could do queen c6. Um, but is there any hope of me checkmating him? There's like no epaulette made or anything here. So yeah, we're gonna go for a draw. That was exciting. Four wins, one draw. Close call. It's well played. Yeah, I've played enough of those end games to know that there are some finesses. Um, it's amazing what's there. But I think backing up, like, where was this? Like, so Queen. Or king takes draws, but I think d7, queen takes, and I attack. Uh, I think you have to do this here. No. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, you do something like this. And then c7, king moves, you, I promote, and then you take my queen. That would have won. Um, I'm not sure what else. Yeah, winning these games is not trivial. And there's a reason I sacked my H-pawn first. It's because um, 
I didn't want to stir this up like while your king was still blockading. Because there was the potential for this kind of thing to happen. Where I've got two of my pawns blockaded and like as soon as I try to sack the remaining one, there's stalemate opportunities everywhere. Um, queen c6 wins, but it's not the safest way to go about it. Yeah, DV Razor is just saying go with this. Um, which would also be fine. But anyway, I don't mean to harp on that. Um, those endgames are tricky. Just like some atomic positions are tricky. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so Nico takes back the queen and then he sees this, and that's how that could have concluded. Um, tough break for Nico. We both, yeah, how did this, what was the evaluation graph like? So apparently after, after King E2, oh, I don't know, like, so, sure, the King of the Hill engine's excellent at tactics calculation stuff, but its evaluation isn't something that I readily trust. So maybe King E2 is the best move, or is at least a good move. Um, I don't know, like, what's going on here. Having the king kind of close to the center is valuable in general, and my king is pretty distant while this pawn stands here. So I think this is still probably advantageous for white. I don't trust it, but it's the best engine that's out there. Yeah, well, what follows, like, knight f6, here we move a piece twice in the opening. And sure, this is to try to block up some squares and try to control more squares and... Um, it's all well intentioned, but this knight e5 moves a piece twice in the opening, and this is where white's development starts to fall behind. And I do play a developing move. I develop my rook, and I actually get my king a little bit closer to the center, although at the moment the knight controls c6 and the pawn controls d7, so it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to advance my king to the center this instant, but... Um, yeah, king e3 is where, I guess, where things fall apart. Apparently I can just take this. Uh, but what about that? What about that? I thought this was okay for white. What's going on here? So I check king over. Um, I guess I check again, or do I use my other knight? Maybe this is why Stockfish doesn't like um, that aggressive king play. I don't know. Yeah, certainly the King of the Hill engine finds these decisive finishes far better than you or I could. Um, <laughs> this is suggesting just play Bishop G7. Don't do anything fancy. I don't know. I felt a lot safer after this move, but Stockfish is saying I don't need it. Um... Yeah, I would not have guessed that move either. Clearly something's going on that neither of us understands in this position. Or Stockfish just has no idea what it's talking about. But yeah, king e2 happens, because I checked and the king has to go somewhere. Stockfish doesn't like my taking there, but I really like it. Just mentally, this puts pressure on white to come up with something. Oh, knight b4 was more accurate, huh. So, pawn takes, 
Well, this is interesting. So Stockfish goes from um, minus 2 to minus 10 as soon as I play King e6. That suggests that on this move, it didn't see the following combinations and stuff, but here it does see that I'm just winning heavy material, I guess. So I must have found something not obvious. So curious. I'll have to come back to this game if ever I can get my local Leech Us instance working again. Um, let's back to the simul. What other games do we have? Oh, we had this Atomic game. Yeah, after... So you remember, we left off Rook, Castle, Castle, Rookie 1, Rookie 8, Rook takes Rook, and then White resigns, because White should resign here. This is kind of over. Um, those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, what Black can just play, like, bring the Rook out. White tries to get all these pawns some distance from his king so he doesn't get mated. Um, and notice the king can't go there because then we have this check and then explosion on f4. So you have like king f1. And white's averted an immediate checkmate, but then the knight swoops in and somehow helps the rook checkmate. So like... How can I get my knight here? I don't know. Somehow black does, and it's mate. Yeah, so knight c5, g5, there, g6, we take it. f5, we check, we check, and then mate. So that's how this could have gone. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, like, supposing that all the pawns were off the board, I'm just demonstrating that a rook and a knight can checkmate. Um, provided that the kings are not adjacent. So it's good to just be aware of these kinds of things in general. Not that it actually mattered there. Yeah, this was fun, the way this ended. Um... Actually, I had this under control for some time, I think. This is the one where I asked, should I sack my... No, this is the one where he sacked all his rooks on the A file. All two of them. And I just have a cluster of pawns and was able to promote on the king's side. And, yeah, then our remaining game, we saw how that progressed. Um, I actually want to analyze this game later, and I'll do so, but I have to get my computer up and running so I could be in a position to analyze these things. Um, but, yeah, that was a fun simul. Um,